All right, gang, I'm recording now. Uh, I'm, I'm back. I was gone uh, for six months. I injured myself. It's a long story. I couldn't do anything. I did make it to APEC last week. That was the first. Uh, that was a milestone. Anyway, uh, something in the news brought me back to uh, YouTube un in an unplanned manner, and that's fine. That's good. I need something to, to uh, motivate me. And... I'm here to discuss it today, and that's what I'm going to do now when I switch to, not that one, but the smaller one. So here we are on the smaller one, looking at the desktop. Oop, wrong one. Okay, here we go. We always start out with this blah, 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 legalism, uh, fair use, educational value, uh, transformative work. Uh, U.S. Code Section 107, Chapter 18, and maybe, oh, there it is on there, Section 107. So uh, we're claiming that and getting that out of the way in the beginning. Thank you. So what would bring me back unplanned? I have planned on redoing one of my old, uh, this one right here. I only have three videos. First hour, 20 minutes of this is going to be reshot and down to an hour or less. I was going to do that first, and uh, but I haven't done it. This happened, so I'm doing this. And it has to do with this. That's, that's the sentiment, I must say. I wouldn't say it just like that. Besides, I, uh, I wouldn't use that hand signal. I'd do uh, another one. Well, I won't demonstrate it now. It's too dumb. Uh, it's too late. And... Um, get off of him for a moment for the rest of the show and go to get to the point. Here's a, here's a tweet I saw. and it, uh, I saw one earlier in the week. It kind of passed me by. Um, I knew it was important, but when I reread it again, it's like, wow. All right. This is why I have this kind of hubris. All right, it says, airy material with explosive power, tweeted by the Graphene Council. Okay, so I say that's similar to what I've been saying for 10 years, blah, 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 me, me, me. They say here, well, here, here's, the, here's the headline. Theoretically, it only takes less than 450 grams of this material to lift an elephant. Well, that's 0.99 of a pound. To us Americans, in other words, one pound of this stuff is going to lift an elephant if you do it their way. I say if you do it my way, you're going to go to the speed of light and lift all kinds of bigger things than elephants. But this uh, article we're going to discuss, a couple of articles and a scientific paper and tweets, this uh, makes a bold statement about the 450 grams. Here's a quote. This means we are now able to use aerographene to start small, controllable, repeatable explosions that do not require a chemical reaction. It says, shoot, summarizing the findings. And elsewhere, we'll get to it. They say things like, no, it's just, you know, mini explosions, propellantless. I guess that's the... Uh, that's a buzzword we're looking for here. So let's just keep digging till, till that one jumps out. And here's another thread. Basically the same thing. Some of these threads. Well, there's a reason why, uh, why I show all those. Here's why. Uh, some nice pictures of what they've done. And if you go back to this video again here, this one which uh, here, it's two hours and four minutes. If you look at the first five minutes of that, which I put out in May and I've been writing about on web pages for years and years, um, it says basically the same thing. It says the same thing as, well, you, you can split hairs though on some things. We'll do that for a little bit later. Um, but I'm saying, yeah, okay, I know that. This is my point. This is what I'm trying to say. In this first five minutes of this thing I put out six months ago, 
I'm proposing to APEC uh, alternate propuls propulsion. I forget what what the, I was just there last week and forget already forget what it means. But a lot of you watch it every week, just like I do, so you know what it is. Anyway, I'm proposing, yeah, let's do this in that lab. Or people can try this at home, I think. It's just you got to be safe with it. Depends on how you do it. All right, I just don't want to tell people to mess around with hydrogen and blow up the kitchen. All right, but there are ways. I think it can be done safely. So what they're doing here is, let's go to the article. You're taking this blob here of carbon nanotubes. Well, they take a little. This is this is a little piece of it here. This is the way they they've blown it out into a bigger. I don't know what you'd call that shape, but it's all there for you to read. And I will link all this stuff below. And if you still can't find it, ask me in the YouTube uh, comments or find me on Twitter. Now, I don't want to bore you by rereading this stuff. They have succeeded in repeatedly heating and cooling aerographene and the air contained inside to very high temperatures in an extremely short period of time. This enables extremely powerful pumps, compressed air applications, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and so forth. In other words, they heat that thing up, this this gizmo here, just using a little bit of electricity. They don't say exactly how little, but it's it's gonna be little, and it's gonna be little for you know big things a lot bigger than that. And it uh, well, it, it's it's heating the air trapped in there, and it's ca causing you know mini explosions, so to speak. That's how they, how they put it. Uh, just a few, blah, blah, blah. In the case of very small, controllable, repeatable explosions that do not require a chemical reaction. The generated air blast can be used to move objects up and down in a very targeted manner. What I'm saying, else have said and say elsewhere, is you attach the air to it, so to speak. Now they're, they're just this is free floating in air. But what I want to do is well, basically, if you if you attach hydrogen to these things, then you have hydrogenated graphene or graphene with an A. It's called. So in other words, you bring your own air with you to outer space as needed. And they're just using it in the air in the lab. It's very similar, but the point is a little bit will do a lot. That's the bottom line. Keep thinking about that one pound lifting an elephant. Now, it's repeat, that's repeated in a couple, you know, two or three articles came out. Uh, you know, not widely uh, read in the, you know, but for people like me, this is red meat. Here is the university they put it out, Kiel, K-I-E-L, Deutschland. All right, this is their college, also known as CAU. I don't know what that means exactly. Um, so they take the articles and copy them from each other. Here's the original tweet from this, this group, Kiel Nano. And they link to their own site, of course, which is this university, which is the same article basically we've already seen. And in the end, they, of course, reference their paper, which is this. Now, I'm suggesting that you got to read this for yourself. Um, because all I can do is read it back to you. 
and you'll find what you know the gems are in there such as propellantless and tells you here how how it you know it, it's vibrating the air or it also heats the air which allows more light to come into the air to be exploded out um, you can they don't say it exactly the way I like it, the way I've said it, frankly, first a long time ago, and you know, more more thoroughly in my opinion, because you're not going to have air everywhere, but it will still work in space, especially if you bring your own air in in air quotes, attach it to the um, graphene that's a metamaterial and and you keep you use it to keep capturing energy and pumping it out and what controls that and this this is where they've made the connection and I was saying this over and over again for years and in that one uh, video and I suggest that it can be we can do it at APEC or people can do it at home uh, it's, you know, when you run an electric or magnetic field around this thing, it's going to manipulate the either the well, the I would say the the attached hydrogen, ideally the way I would do it, but it's going to manipulate the graphene to move heat, or it'll get hot, it'll either absorb or just start vibrating. Uh, one's joule heat and one's radiative, uh, I believe. And they uh, they distinguish it here. Where is it? And you'll find it, because if you're truly interested, you're going to read this for yourself. And what else happens? Well, the abstract, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it goes through the explosions, you know, they, they cover all the bases of what's going on with it. And I'm saying certain aspects of it. Yeah, if you want to stay in air, fine with this. And they also, they have other applications for it too, but the propulsion to us Anyone listening to me knows that's, and you know what? This paper, you don't have to pay for it. Thank you, Keel University, or maybe it's Kyle, I don't know. Uh, uh, they have, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, have videos at the end. Rarely do you see that. I think they have six or nine of them or something. And, uh, well, let's get to the conclusions here before you all fall asleep. Da, 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 da. Manic systems on demand, blah, blah, blah. There are several other potential opportunities, including propulsion systems like thrusters used in a satellite. Well, some of us think the whole skin of uh, the satellite should be made out of this stuff. Something functioning like it. You know, one pound per elephant. Yeah, one pound per elephant. Yeah, we'll start there. You know, how he, how they calculated that, I don't tell you that exactly on here, but this university, you know they have the backup for that. And it, to me, it's intuitive because every time I look at a cloud, I see trillions of tons of matter, mass, that should be either liquid on the ground or solid on the ground, frozen. But instead, because the light's pumping through it, it is in the sky, it's anti-gravity, it's very heavy. Same things are going on with balloons. A balloon has the gas propelling it, pulling it, because it's pumping light. You can say it's uh, density and buoyancy, but density and buoyancy have a reason, an underlying reason, and that's been overlooked. These people... sort of recognize that. 
I don't think they fully grasp what they've got here. But I like it. And then if they stumbled onto it, I mean, I, I think, um, well, I, I, you'd have to go and read every single thing. I'm not going to make a blanket statement about that. But all I can do is make blanket statements about that. And what else can I do? Oh, here, here's your one pound equals 450 grams. That da, 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 tweets. You've gone over this. Oh, this is me suggesting the same thing to the alien scientist, who's a big part of APEC, back in March. Here's my little pictures of my graphene. There it is. There's mine. It's it's in a box under this desk. No need to pull it out now because we already did that. Why contaminate it? And yeah, okay, here's a little picture of graphene. This is the graphene, the six carbon atoms in one dimension, two dimensions. And these dark things here are six hydrogen atoms, three in the top, three on the bottom, per ring of graphene. Now, what could possibly more be more efficient and moving energy, it certainly isn't nitrogen slash air with a little oxygen and water in it. That's what they're doing. And they're lifting elephants with one pound of it. See where I'm going here. I've been going a long time. I need to start bringing some more of you with me. Because this is how it's going to happen. It may happen other ways, too. I'm not excluding anybody. I'm just pushing this. Uh, Nana, okay, that's the article. We've been over this. And again, I'm telling you to read it for yourself. There it is right there. Will be linked below. It's already linked on my Twitter. Uh, it's available for anybody. This just came out Monday. Today is Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. And, oh. I just randomly ran across this. I don't know how. It's in the same magazine. That's how. Talking about the little graphene balloons, 2,000, 100, I'm sorry, 200 times stronger than steel. You know, comparing it to, you know, what, well, how do we put it at the bottom of the ocean? Would it make a dent? I don't know. They play around with their uh, Pascal meters or whatever they are. So again, that's my question to you, audience. What else did I have to say here? Oh, there's the, there's the, there's the light pumper lifting an elephant. It's the same principle, except they've packed it in to a piece of graphene, like your boy here told him to a long time ago. Well, they figured it out. They, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, they don't. They don't really tell you what made them decide to do it. Uh, well, actually, they do tell you a little bit. Yeah. I don't think they have the overall light pumping principle grasped yet. But they're going to stumble upon it. They're going to fool around and find out because they took. Where is it? They took those little graphene like this. They said, we were messing around with this thing, and they noticed something. So they stretched it out into this ball-looking thing. Where is the ball-looking thing? There it is. No, not that. There. Let's start with this. That's what I was talking about. And they're saying, if you blow it out this way, you're lifting elephants. You know, this might have been lifting an, I don't know, a toy elephant, if you do it right. And I'm saying if you do it even righter than right, that's right what they're doing here. But again, they're using the ambient air. I don't want to have to depend on that. I want my spaceship to have, have its own air. 
in this case, just hydrogen or some other, you know, more <coughs> reliable solution than just the air that's around. Anyway, I think that's about it. How long have I been talking? I don't care, really. Uh, thank you for listening. Be sure to share, subscribe, and hit the notification. Remember this. Listen again if you didn't get it. Okay? Because you want to be there. You were part of it. Because you were paying attention to this. And one way or another, it's going to be right. It already is right. It's just, it just has to be optimized. See this? This is me te explaining how to optimize it. And, you know, I don't have all the answers. I'm just saying this is where you're going. This is from a couple years ago. That's still better than what they're doing, but that's fine. That's good. That's what experimenting is for. That's what these people did. And they learned something. And they're, they're digging into why. And they see they, they have it broken down into three pieces, three types of, you know, heating. And the one is far more important than the others, but this will work. It'll work. If my anti-gravity device doesn't leave the air for a while, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> how are people going to drive these things? Please. Let alone get shot out into space. So just be careful if you're fooling around at home. Don't blow up the house because these people here, you're finding a lot of energy in that. All, all they do is run a little, you know, run some electrons through there. That's probably your 4D battery, or that's like less than an A battery, a tri uh, triple, triple or double. And you're lifting elephants by attaching this thing to its collar. Okay, that's what we're talking about. That only, only we're going to do more than lift. We're going to see how this. That's all haphazard. I mean. You're going to get the lift. You also want the direction. That's why you're going to have it in nice, neat metamaterials like graphene, like this. Because you can shape. It's coming in that way. It's going out that way. How do you how do you make it do that? Well, you send the electron down this way or over that way and the other way. You can also move other kinds of... Uh, Radiation through there or, you know, magnetic fields. Whatever you're doing to that is going to affect how the light's coming through this way. See what I'm saying? Shoot through this way to control it. Boom, it's going in or out, on or off. So I think I've about beat that to death for now a little bit. I go back and look at this. Uh, uh, but that's, that's my own thing. Look at this. Well, it looks like I managed to learn how to. Okay, not that. At least that that would be some progress. Enough. But uh, just so yes, go back, find that thing. This one. I only have a couple of them. This this is the best overall one I think. This one's uh, more uh, specific to the transmedium hydrophobic which you know this this uh graphene can easily be the vantabilac version of it which you're going to need that for absorption anyway so you know what we need is a coordinated effort that's what i'm trying to do once it's understood a need for a coordinated effort will be launched um, I'm 64 years old. I'm not going to be around for, you know, it's going to take a while, okay? But it's got to get launched. It's got to get kicked off. People have to realize what this is and act. So anyone listening that thinks they want to act, has a few questions, et cetera, and so forth, get in touch. It's easy. Um, I'd say you'll be sorry if you don't. 
But I'm not going to go there yet. Because it's just too flippin' obvious. Alrighty then, I guess that's about enough of that. So, I will probably wave goodbye and log off till next time. 25 minutes. That's not too bad. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.